Aldis podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Mona Khalil. Mona is the Data Science Manager at Greenhouse Software. Mona, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Mona, let's start with yourself, please. If you could give us a, a bit of background on yourself, your journey in technology from what got you interested, where you got started, and what's led you to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. As you mentioned, I'm currently the manager of the data science team at Greenhouse. For quick context, we're a team of five people, and I think like I can go into that more later. What got me into this role in this field is, I think, probably one of what's considered a more of a non-traditional path. I started off joining a PhD program in developmental psychology, leaned into statistics and psychometrics that we had some great training for in-house. And ultimately, I think just loving that more and more, like the quantitative side, the statistics work, heard about this fun and interesting and upcoming field called data science. And I think ultimately just chose to leave academia because I wanted to have more of a direct impact. Started off as an analyst in a school, also spent time working in the public sector as a research scientist, and ultimately had a few different positions here and there until I found my work at Greenhouse, which has really been, I think, like a great place for me to flourish and grow my niche skill set. So with a background in behavioral science, behavioral analytics, and having taught myself and learned from different sources a lot of data science, I think here I am today, and I've been able to apply skills I never thought I would in this field. Yeah, and, and the behavioral science stuff we'll get to in a moment, given how relevant it will be to, to what you do on a daily basis. But for anyone not familiar, tell us about Greenhouse. Who are Greenhouse? What do you do as a business? What's the mission of the organization? Yeah, absolutely. So Greenhouse is at its core an applicant tracking system. We offer a lot more than that. So if you're familiar with you find a company, you like them, you scroll to the bottom of their page and hit their careers page, and then you're taken to an external site with a very simple job board. If you're familiar with the kind that's like, one page applications, you don't have to make an account, re-enter your resume six times, and it's relatively simple. There's a good chance that's us. On the back end, we have a whole suite of different products to support hiring, to support sourcing, to support what we call structured hiring, which is core to our mission, which is to make companies great at hiring. And what we mean by that is we want to provide tools to fairly and equitably evaluate your candidates so that you provide, so that you find the right person for your job and that the candidates along the way feel that they were fairly evaluated based on the skill sets that were presented to them as part of that job. Yeah, and as somebody who who spends most of his day talking to companies about the challenges in hiring, many of whom are using Greenhouse, I can attest to its uh, easy and seamless uh, interaction on the user side. Let's focus now on the data science behind it all, like your role there as the data science manager. Can you give us some insight into what it entails? Uh, you already talked about the current team size, so what is it like there day to day? What are some of the projects that you guys are working on and the, what role does data science play in, in making the platform so easy to use for both a, a, a customer side and then also for an individual candidate? So we're a small team of five people. We primarily support the R&D side of the business. So we help the product and product engineering teams decide what to build, how to evaluate the effectiveness of different areas of the product, how to understand just like behavioral trends in how people tend to use the product, what they need. Like really, like we do a lot. I think the way that I would categorize it is we own what we call internally product intelligence. So very broadly, the information that you need uh, to decide and understand how people use the product, what they need in order to hire fairly and equitably, and what they need in order to have a better experience using the product. Uh, The other thing that we own is machine learning, which we don't do a ton of, but we're actually starting to grow that arm pretty significantly over the next year. What that looks like as far as the projects that we lean into, primarily internal ML facing or tools that enable customers to boost their hiring intelligence. So 
we have a number of small ML products in like in the actual product, like a couple of recommenders here and there. We have a few models that we're prototyping right now. The one thing that you will definitely never see from us or that it's not on our roadmap and we've intentionally left out is we're never going to take away the decision from you as a customer as to who's the right candidate for your job. Most of what, what we know is that there's a lot of potential ethical issues in that. And we just, we don't feel comfortable touching that. We want to give you the tools that you need to make your best decision in hiring. That's so important because when we talk about automation and, and these systems, a human in the loop element is critical for trust in what comes out the other side. And as again, as somebody who works in, in staffing every day, so often we see hiring managers identify things on resumes, but a lot more comes out of the conversation. So that's great to hear. Mona, I want to spend a bit of time talking about the data science group and, and how it's evolved since you first joined back in the, the summer of 2019. When you came in as a as a data scientist, you then got promoted several times and now you're leading the group. And with that, Greenhouse as a platform has also had incredible growth. Can you give us some insight into what the last three years has been like from when you first joined, different iterations of the, of the function and what it looks like now in its current form. Your timing couldn't be better because we've really evolved that a lot in the last year. So I think when I started, we were supporting, I want to say a lot of stakeholders around the business. We didn't support R&D as much, but we did offer support to say like the customer success team, generating insights, uh, generating reports and tools to help them be help our customer success managers be thought leaders and experts to consult with their customers. We supported the marketing team and generating a wide variety of insights, finance, you name it. And we did like a little bit of everything across the business. And at some point in the last year, we really started thinking as we were scaling the company and growing of what we can do to build in some specialization on that so that each team really gets the in-depth support that they deserve. So we recently split off business analytics into a separate function from data science. They now live in a separate part of the org and they're re they've recently started building out that team. Uh, we have more analysts on the business side supporting day-to-day -day operational needs. We've also hired out and built our first data engineering team less than a year ago, whereas previously that was owned by a small number of people supported by the infrastructure team, as well as a couple of individual data engineers. But ultimately we decided it was time for that to live as a separate function from us. So. What we've been doing is leaning into providing in-depth support for product engineering. So each data scientist, and I'll say we come from a wide variety of backgrounds and skill sets, uh, and we bring a lot, like a lot of different things to the table. Ultimately, like everybody in there, based on their skill sets, their interests, is matched with one of the product engineering teams and provides first and foremost day-to-day -day support to the product managers, the eng managers of those teams to help them make effective decisions with the resources that they have. And that's, I think, probably the workflow that we have that's the most reactive. So we help answer day-to-day -day questions. We build up a body of knowledge. Outside of that, we do more in-depth analysis. And recently we've been leaning more into understanding the impact on diversity, equity, inclusion in our product. So that's been a big line of research where we're really starting to uh, try to build knowledge and understand like what trends in the usage of our product lead to fairer hiring outcomes, less disparate hiring outcomes for underrepresented groups, and really like putting together information and resources for our customer facing teams and our customers on how to do better, how to achieve their goals in whatever direction they feel is appropriate, as well as uh, informing product development. So what features can we build, can we iterate on to support DEI and the fair hiring, like the fair hiring practices of our customers? since we really feel that's core to our mission. We're also, I think recently, like some of the work that we're doing that some of my team members are leaning in on more is we're building out a set of foundational machine learning models. So really leaning into how we can extract meaningful information from the wide variety of data that we can in a structured way. Some examples are user segmentation. So we're building our first user segments. We're also building a couple of models to extract job metadata. So if you think about a job posting, there's a lot of text data. It's a lot of free text. There are not a lot of standardized fields because they don't all apply to different customers in the same way. And what we're doing is we're building a series of models to extract standardized information from that text in as comprehensive a way as possible so we can understand broader trends in hiring across like different industries, different job types, uh, different job titles, 
job seniority levels, you name it. There are a lot of things that we're currently prototyping in that realm. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. It's been an amazing three years for Greenhouse as somebody who's been a little bit closer to it and seen its rapid growth. And I feel like as we come out of the post-pandemic world, there's a lot of organizations who are looking to grow again. And a big part of that is hiring people, doing it smoother, more efficiently in the most competitive job market in history. Greenhouse is a great platform to help organizations do it. But when you guys look at internally for your own growth, Looking at the next two to three years ahead, what do you see as some of the major milestones that you're working towards and and what are you most excited about for the the data science aspect of this growth? Oh, so much. I think to start with, I think what we've been really excited about is to see the growth of business analytics as a distinct function because there's so many teams we haven't been able to serve effectively that are starting to get data to just inform their day-to-day decisions and really iterate on and improve all of their processes The second thing that I think is really exciting that pretty significantly growing out is data engineering. Whereas I think we, like I said, we haven't really had that as a distinct function, but we've decided it's time to form a distinct data engineering team that's putting a lot of thought into what our data models need to look like to support effective analytics and decision-making across the business. If you're a user of Greenhouse, you know that Greenhouse does a lot of things. So if you're thinking about what a schema might look like in a product that has so many different processes for the whole scope of what you need to do to hire effectively. Like we have a lot of tables. We have probably thousands and thousands of tables in our database. And it's often very difficult uh, to find the data you need if you're looking at the normalized schema. So we're putting a lot of thought into re-architecting large parts of our schema at the moment. So hopefully in the next two to three years, we're looking at a well-built out analytics engineering function as well as separately within data engineering, what we're calling a data platform function, since we're really leaning into machine learning about the tools that we need to have effective model monitoring, batch predictions, you name it. Like we have, we've built a lot of those things in house and we're really thinking about what we need to take that to the next level. We also produce a wide variety of data products. So we've been putting a lot of thought recently into what tools we need to scale over the next year, specifically in the realm of if we're doing product intelligence analysis, a lot of prototype before we get to building models in production, how do we, what's the best place that we can generate interactive tools to share them with the stakeholders we need? So that's something that we're actively thinking about. And our goal in the next two to three years is hopefully within data science, given all of that foundation, to actually potentially either split our team into two laterally, which is a which I think was a decision we intentionally made as part of our strategy was to think about not necessarily having like a product analytics and then a data science team, but to create opportunities for thinking about problems to solve internally versus externally. We're leaning into product intelligence as an internal function that will own the day-to-day decision support, A-B testing and experimentation, a lot of research internally, and likely also the foundational models like user segmentation that we talked about. On the separate side, we're thinking about in the next few years, splitting off a separate function for customer data products. So specifically a distinct squad whose problems that they're solving are very uniquely like tied to the needs of the customer, looking at what's created earlier, like upstream by product intelligence, but also thinking about what those problems we can solve are that we can directly put in front of customers to help them get to help them reach their goals, get to the right hire as soon as possible, make sure that they evaluate them as effectively as possible and thinking about what tools we might want in order to do that. We have, I think, like a handful of machine learning models, model ideas that are currently being prototyped. And hopefully in the next couple of years, if you're a greenhouse user, you might get a chance to see some of those. Final question from me, Mona. You talked about it earlier in the interview, the background of people joining greenhouse is quite varied. And with the level of growth and and sort of separation of teams as the evolution of the organization continues to evolve, When you look externally, I know you play a pivotal role in the hiring of all all the technical people. 
speaking to candidates from various backgrounds, when you're sat with them, whether it's over Zoom or in person, what is it that you tell them about the environment, that greenhouse, the work that you're doing and the growth of the business that gets them interested in joining you guys over some of the other great opportunities that are available to them? I love that question. Uh, and I think that's, that resonates a lot because we actually hired pretty recently towards the end of last year, we actually filled four open roles on my team and have a few folks who are actually quite new and are building their careers here as we start, as we talk now. Um, I think one of the things that we talked about that really resonated with people was our ethical stance and the type of work that we drew a line in the sand that we would not do because we were afraid of the harm it might cause as well as the general philosophy that everybody comes from a different background, brings a different context. And the best thing we can do is empower and support each other. So we have a very strong pairing culture. That's been something that's really, I think been uh, a huge asset uh, for folks that have been applying that we really try to enable collaboration wherever possible, because we do believe that's going to produce better work and better outcomes for everybody involved. We got a lot of folks who were really interested in, like you said, the types of problems we're trying to solve, really trying to, like, broadly speaking, we, like the questions and the problems we're trying to solve are, how do we use data science and the methods in our field to help people make better and more fair and more equitable hiring decisions? So just with that broad mission in mind, that's in line with the company mission to make our customers great at hiring and really empower uh, fair, fairness, equity, structure in the hiring process, as well as drive DEI outcomes. We found a lot of people who were genuinely passionate in the work that we're doing. And I think going back to the point about the ethical line in the sand that we drew, we don't evaluate candidates with ML is the line that we draw. So you as a candidate are not ever being evaluated by an algorithm or an automated decision. And that comes from a perspective where we do not feel confident that even if we put an effort to remo remove some of the biases, maybe do a bias evaluation by EEOC category or something like that, we're not confident that we can remove the bias of an automated system. So we do not do that. You as a candidate never get touched by an algorithm with if like using our software directly. So that was, I think, a huge relief for a lot of people applying because there are some big concerns about ML fairness. However, that doesn't mean that we don't do machine learning. We very much think, I think, outside of the box of the immediate automated decision making and think about how we can actually use these same models to build up intelligence and tools to drive the positive outcomes that we actually want to create. Mona, thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on today and talking to us. It was great to learn about what goes on behind the scenes at Greenhouse as someone who uses it every day and, and many of our partners use it on a you know frequent basis to build out their teams. I can attest to it being an excellent and probably industry leading platform, but it, it's great to hear about the growth, the mission and the opportunities that there are going to be for people to join in the years ahead. And as I know from speaking to yourself previously and talking to people who use Greenhouse, uh, it's nothing but great things and it sounds like it would be a fun place to work. So we wish you, the team and, and everyone at Greenhouse the best of luck in the years to come. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.